Okay, in this video, I want to go through the spot drilling and drilling and tapping these five holes that are located here on the top surface of this component. And just for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to use this drill, which means I actually have to select the points. I'm going to use what we call the feature-based machining drilling operation, if you like. Um, so clicking on that, and the first thing that we need to notice is if I go down to hole detection. So under hole detection, um, I'm limiting the search to the top plane. You can see at the drop down list there, you can select um, different planes, but obviously these holes are on the top plane, so that's correct. And we could do a search for holes between 0.5 and 25 mil. Now, again, if you wanted to narrow that down, I could say it's between three and six millimeters. Okay. Spot drilling then, so spot drilling is checked, so it means it's going to spot drill the holes before it actually drills the holes. And you can see that the default here for the depth is the actual percentage of the finished holes. These holes are M5, so the tapping drill size is 4.2, so the chamfer will be 100% of the finished hole, which is at 4.2. Also, just on hole detections here, you'll notice that I have include chamfers on here. What that will mean is it'll pick up these actual chamfers that are on the model. Um, and we'll see how that, that affects things later on in the video. If I just go green tick on there, in other words, I apply it, you can see what's happened here. I now have a feature-based machining operation. Firstly, you could note on here, the little ghost here just means that it, this operation will not be posted out. It's automatically not posted out. But if I need to change the parameters um, of this feature-based machining operation, I click on the parameters in under here. Okay. So the first operation then obviously is spot drilling the holes. And then I've done a peck drilling operation. And then I'm not sure why, but it's picked up a number of operations to countersink the holes. So it's just picked up this one hole. And then you'll see that it's picked up two geometries for this one. And it's picked up another operation to sham for that one and another operation to sham for that one. Um, not 100% sure why they're not all in the one operation. But what I have noticed is that if I went back to the parameters here and essentially uncheck include chamfers and regenerate it, obviously now I will just have my spot drilling operation and my peck drilling operation. Okay, and then you'll see I have no chamfers. But then if I go back into my parameters here and actually include chamfers and regenerate again, what you'll notice here then is that all the chamfers are included in one operation. So for small holes, I normally don't use or include the chamfer function. So what I'll actually do is I'll create the chamfer by going down deep enough with the spot drill. So I'm going to go back to my parameters on here and basically uncheck the chamfers. If I was to look down at my linking parameters on here, my retract plane, you can see that I have a number of different options on here. But solid height plus is fine. And I'm going to say plus three millimeters. Coolant, yes, I want coolant on. And again, I'm going to go OK on here and regenerate. Now, just one thing to be careful of here. OK, so this is my spot drill. So I need to go to the parameters on here and I'm going to go to the tools. And what you can see here is Mastercam has added a number of tools automatically into the library. So you can see here that uh, the spot drill is in fact the same number as, as the 12 millimeter cutter. In other words, tool 12. So I'm going to edit that tool. The drill diameter I'm going to actually say in this case is eight. Next. The tool number for the spot drill in our machine again is tool number 19. And the cutting speed is 55. The feed per tooth is 0 0.06, but I've got two flutes on this particular cutter. And finish. I'll just put in a comment. Spot drill holes. Okay, if I go to my linking parameters then on here, 
I'm going to set that the clearance is 25 millimeters absolute and it's only been used at the start and the end of an operation. The retract plane I'm going to say is absolute 3. The top of the stock I'm going to pick off the model and the depth and just like I've done on previous videos here I'm going to say that the finished diameter of the hole has to be six millimeters. So I'm going down and tapping M5. So I'll have a half mil chamfer per side, if you like, from the, the thread. And just overwrite that depth. So you can see that the depth that the spot drill is going to go down is in fact going to give me the chamfer, okay? Coolant, just double check that it is on. Yes, okay. And green tick. My pectoral operations, and again, if I look on here, this is a 4.2 millimeter drill. This should be tool number 13, basically, on my list. So back to my parameters, go to my tool, double click on tool number one. And again, next, this is tool number 13. The cutting speed for this tool is 68. And the feed per tooth is 0.08. And again, that's based on having two flutes. Finish. OK. So I'll accept that. And I'm going to add a comment. Drill holes. Again, I'm going to have a look at my linking parameters. And I'm going to put my clearance. I tend to always work in absolutes for clearance. So again, 25 millimeters. My retract plane, three absolute. The top of the stock, again, I might pick off the model. So picking a point on the top of the model and the depth is coming basically from the solid model. Um, now, the one thing that you need to note on here is that this using a pectoral operation, but I have no pec distance in here. So I'm going to give that a positive value of three. Um, again, we can see that there are, we could actually pick a chip break as opposed to a pectoral. So chip break, the two will only retract a small amount, while on a pectoral operation, the tool is going to retract all the way out of the hole to clear the swarf. Coolant again should be automatically on and regenerate. So these holes then have to be tapped. So what I'm going to essentially do is copy so right click and drag the pectoral operation and say copy after. I go into my parameters and first of all, starting a tool, I'm going to select a library tool. And on here then I'm going to pick a threading tap. So M5 tap. You change my comment to tap holes. Again, if I was to look on here, I'll just open up the, the tap. So the RM5 tap is, in fact, tool number nine. Next. So tool number nine. And my cutting speed is OK. OK, so I'm happy to tap at the spindle speed of 795. The feed per tooth a little bit maybe confusing on here. I'm leaving this set to one because it's picking that up as the pitch of the actual tap. Um, so an M5 tap has a pitch of 0.8. Um, so it would be vital not to change the number of flutes in this case. Otherwise, I would not be feeding at the correct feed rate. In other words, I would uh, destroy the thread. OK, so finish. Again, just double check my linking parameters. So I don't want to go down the full depth. So I'm just going to go in here and actually say that I'm going to come up four millimeters from there, so plus four. Regenerate that. Oops, obviously one fo crucial mistake here. My cut parameters, I need to change this to a tapping cycle. So that's gonna be a G84 um, can cycle basically on our Haas and regenerate. So now I have my spot drill operation, my pec drill operation and my tapping operation. OK, so finally, just to do a little bit of tidy up on here, um, if I click on the parameters on here, the first thing to point out is that there's a little green tick beside each of the tools that are currently used in the full program. So you can see tool two, three, four and five here don't have a green tick associated to them. 
So essentially what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to delete these tools. So if I click on one and then essentially hit delete on my keyboard. So I am removing the tools that essentially I'm not using in this operation. Okay, and then green tick.